first speaker is Professor Stefan Wolfgang Pickel uh, from the Universität der Bundeswehr München, uh, Germany. Uh, Professor Pickel studied mathematics, electrical engineering, and philosophy at, at TU Darmstadt and EPFL Lausanne from 1987 to 1993, uh, with a diploma in 93 and a doctorate in, in 1998 with a award. Assistant Professor at Cologne University, um, completed his habit, habilitation at, at 2005. Uh, visiting Professor at the University of New Mexico, uh, University of Graz, uh, University of California at Berkeley, the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey. He was a visiting sci scientist at San Diego Los Alamos National Lab, the Santa Fe Institute for Complex Systems, and MIT. He is associated with the Center for Information Technology and Algorithms uh, in the US, the Center for Network Innovation and Experimentation, uh, the won International Best Paper Awards in 2003, 2005, 2007. He is the chair of the advisory board of the German Society for Operations Research, chair of the uh, GOR Working Group Simulation and Optimization of Complex Systems Foundation of Comtesa. Uh, I would like you all to welcome Dr. Pickle and thank you very much. The title of his presentation is Adaptive Intelligent Management Systems for IT-Based Decision Support with Complex Reachback Processes. Yes, dear Mr. Chairman, dear President Kalalos, it's a great honor for me to be here. Many greetings from Germany, as I mentioned it yesterday. It's the first time for me to give not a dinner speech, but a breakfast speech. And uh, I learned in the US that breakfast does not pay any role. It's, it's only to drink a coffee in the car. But what we learned yesterday by uh, Professor Kalaalos, he's not uh, a typical American people and his conferences has all a different style and, and I appreciate this style and it's, it's a breakfast like in Vienna, congratulations. And I hope I can give now a little bit of speech which reflects to you to your breakfast, yes? I'm coming from a computer science department but I would not like to bore you now with mathematics or computer science, but a little bit reflect what we learned yesterday. Please have in mind the distinct between instruction and education. Is there a difference? Does a computer scientist like me have to consider this difference? I would like to tell you a little bit about IT decision support in modern environments and what does it mean reach back? Why is it is necessary to deal with complex systems. We need to give quick decisions for certain problems, and we observe then in logistics, in management, there is an increase of complexity, and it is urgent to make quick, intelligent, and good decisions. I am the chair for operation research in Munich, this is my university, and I would like to welcome you. In Munich, it's a little bit different. You eat white sausages for the breakfast. And what is difficult, different to Florida, this is my institute. You have now snow there, and we are seeing the Alps. I would like to invite you to come to our university. And you see here, we are developing the so-called Galileo system, the GPS system. Good morning, and uh, I would like to uh, give you a nice breakfast. My topic at Munich is the analysis, the controllability, and optimization of complex systems and dynamical games. And my approach is for this morning, the next 20 minutes, that you understand a little bit why is there a link between systems and games? Why, what can we learn from that? We have some research projects, and I would like to skip in the next 20 minutes three of them, the so-called ENOS, Intelligent Networks and Security Structures, Crisis, Critical Infrastructures and System Analysis, and Process Optimization. And I embed this in a research center, and 
I hope that Professor Kalaalos will join the advisory board, which is a core competence center for operational research, management, and tenacity that we learn a little bit to trust and sustainable development in a safety and security alliance. What is hidden, hidden is OR and IT, and in front is safety and security. And it is a, a small homework for you for tomorrow. Please Google if you find in the internet Contessa the name, because it's a very important old European woman which deals also in earlier times with a distinction of instruction and education. Our vision is at Contessa to build bridges. You see here our industrial partners and you see here also our university partner, the Naval Postgraduate School. For example, there's an experiment. You have here a sensor on the Golden Gate Bridge and here is a, a pirate or a smuggler and the signal is transferred to Singapore, from Singapore to Munich, and we analyze it, and then on that boat, we give a certain command, is it critical or not? This is modern IT-based decision support. My team is called Comtessa, and the abbreviation for team OR is TOR, and TOR is a German word for gate. And for that reason, I learned also in that conference, we are a door opener for certain problems. So for that reason, each year we are placing in front of a door at our university. And I would like to open now a little bit the door from my research. I came from Frankfurt two days before. And what are we doing there in Munich or Frankfurt? In the year 2005, George W. Bush visited Germany. And he visited Germany for eight hours. And during these eight hours in Frankfurt, one million persons were not allowed to go on their regular way to work. Highways were closed, railway stations were closed, according to security issues. There was a certain distance of 30 minutes if, for example, a terrorist would walk to the Air Force number one. Nevertheless, what is important, this is a high speed train from Frankfurt, from Frankfurt to Cologne, and Cologne is a distance of 150 miles. This high speed train took 32 minutes for this 150 miles. For that reason, for a complex system to protect a terrorist who is coming from Cologne to that plane, is the same distance in a network than going from a passenger these 30 minutes. And this is now a little bit the challenge, the new task to understand complex system. But we would not like to deal with critical terrorist attacks. We would like to have fun a little bit. This is the World Soccer Championship. And you see Germany once and there was an event more than one million people in Berlin. Everything was happy. But what would happen, for example, if Germany would lose a game against the United States in the quarterfinal, and a thunderstorm would occur, then we would have a little bit a difficult situation. And the question is, what is the role of the emergency exits? How can we understand a little bit this be human factors behavior. And this we learned also yesterday a little bit. We are all specialists for technical systems on one side, for cybernetics, informatics. But what is about the human behavior? How can we solve certain solutions? And I took this night a little bit of an example which shows us a little bit the difference between instructional education. This is a little bit the situation to evacuate a certain room, like this. We have 100 persons, like here, they have breakfast, and now a fire occurs. And I ask my students, what would you suppose? Some students would say, okay, let us make the door more open, bigger. But what does then happen? Then the crowding effect, because 
all the people see early on the door, the crowding effect is bigger. Other students say, but the builder make two doors, like here. And then it's nice because the industry is coming and says, if you have two doors, we don't trust an engineer. We need education programs, training programs. I train that if there is a fire, everything to the left will leave in that door, everything to the right will go by that door. But what must then happen, for example? One person goes to that door and a person here observes this and then he cross the whole room. And then we have some obstacles. Other people from industry say, Professor Pickle, this is not a good example because yellow is not a nice color. Please take red or blue, then it's easier to evacuate. Can we forecast such a solution? These are 100 students and here we have 1 million people. These are critical situations. They are unusual. We cannot test them every day. They are unexpected, not frequent, not regular, and unpredictable. Nevertheless, there is a challenge, there is a homework for us to deal with systematic handling of OR for that critical situations. We have to solve this crisis, and yesterday we learned, is there a difference between instructional education? Our task is minimize the damage, isn't it? It's a pure instruction, but to recover, recover smart solutions. This is education. And the solution is not to make the door bigger, not to put two or three doors, to put an obstacle, to learn that maybe sometimes a detour or an obstacle is better than an obvious situation. This is for me education in the sense of Professor Kalalos. And then the computer scientists can prove, can write a software and can say, okay, I can really state without an obstacle, with an obstacle, it is really better. And such an approach leads to a better crisis management. This is a little bit the idea for innovation, for a dynamic process handling, for an adaptive, reactive and intelligent approach of complex systems. We have another, we have a laboratory and there we do the so-called educational games. Not instruction games, educational games. What are we doing? Is there some person from Greece here, if I may ask? You know that at the moment in Greece, the Greece person in Europe causes a lot of problems. Nevertheless, we should not forget that 2,000 years ago, the Greeks are the father of geometry. And I suggested to the Naval Postgraduate School the following example. If there is again a certain fire, and you have to attack the fire, what is an instruction for a fireman? The instruction for a fireman is look to a mathematical textbook and learn from the Greek people that, for example, if you have a triangle and you put the fireman, everything is fine. This is instruction. But the Greeks are also the father of philosophy. And at the moment they have an economic problem. And in philosophy you learn that you are a wise man. And for example, if there is a person where he said, my uncle has here a certain land where he is wood. And if the wood is destroyed by fire, then I can sell the land to build some houses or an investment park. And maybe it happened that the fire during the night is pushed in a certain direction by our influence. And then we have to react. We have to react in an intelligent way, but you see, the uncle is still trying to get here the land taken by the fire. And here you see we have a dynamic system and a game theoretic behavior. Now we are developing an optimal solution, but education means to react also to the response on the other person, 
on the system. The system is reactive. And the question is, how can we generalize a little bit this very simple breakfast example? And we can it for, for example, sensor placement in museums, on highways, yes, where we have to guarantee a certain supply, where we have to calculate a certain need for services. We should ask, where should we place the firemen as the sensors? How many firemen or sensors are necessary? Which regions should be protected? Can we influence certain regions? And again, from the computer science, this is again the instruction. Can we minimize the damage? But this is education. Can we forecast? Can we develop smart solutions? And this is education again. And I'm thankful for all these conferences here at Florida, where we learn a lot of that approach. And there we learn, for example, to deal with more complex scenarios and, for example, with games where the fireman says it makes no sense in an instruction way to go to every fire directly. No, in a smart behavior, it took longer, but please protect a little bit a certain region. And after a certain time, which maybe took longer, we have protected a certain region. We are expanding this example in a more complex way. Oh, there is normally a movie, but it will not work. Uh, I apologize. Well, we are embedded in an international experiment where you see, for example, that global reachback is located in Monterey, transferred to Munich, transferred to the San, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and also to Singapore. This is a little bit an example, it's a challenge. And what are we doing, for example? This is a multi-layered decision process, and our task is please try to identify which are the options and which solutions, which coalition at each time stop are the best options, the best firemen or the best sensors. And this is a little bit a program from Germany, multi-layered games on networks, and optimal decisions try to identify in a smart way the optimal preference structures. You mentioned that we are connected with the Santa Fe Institute and there we learned a lot from complex decision-making processes on these multi-layered structures. I would like to summarize a little bit my talk. Yesterday we learned in the center should be education, but isolated education it's like a book without pages. For that reason, we have to deal, because here this is a computer science conference, with information. We can say also with big data. And we have to link it with education. But what is missing? Missing is we need this relationship for planning in the future, for the design of complex system. And we have to link these two things. But we have forgotten two tasks. We have forgotten one issue, new technologies. Yesterday there was a discussion on e-learning. How can we use a smartphone, how can we use a tablet or a mobile phone in an intelligent way in order to make certain systems more secure, more safe, safety and security, which is in the heart of Comtesa. And if you combine all this, and then I come back to my roots as a computer scientist, this is a certain, we call it graph, it's a so-called Peterson graph, and this graph has again nice hidden properties. And this is a little bit the hidden dimension of education. I come to the end with a picture which I took in Europe. This is a paraglider, and classical science can prove everything. A physicist can prove that this paraglider can fly. A mechanic person can calculate the minimal weight of this paraglider. An economist 
can calculate the optimal day, maybe on a Monday it's cheaper than on a Friday or Saturday. We can all prove this. This is instruction. But at the end, and this is education, the final decision to go through the fog on the earth is still the decision of the human being. And for that reason, I would like to thank the chairman and also Professor Kalalos for the invitation. And I would like to conclude with a word from Goethe. It is not enough to wish. You should apply it. And it is not enough to, to do. You should do it in an educational sense. And I have a book, the new book of January, to you and also some chocolate for the chairman. Thank you very much again. If you like, please come to Munich. And what is important to learn during my lecture? You know the October 1st? Yes. When will the October 1st take place? In September. A lot of persons write me, ah, oh, Professor Pickley, I would like to visit you in October. Can I give a talk? You I said, you can give a talk, but the October 1st is in September. <laughs> OK. Everything OK? We come to the next talk, yes? <laughs>